Namaste. My name is Neelima. Welcome to Reflections Along the Way podcast where you will be listening to reflections from learnings and experiences along my life's journey. There is a Sanskrit term that is generally used to describe the supreme reality and that is Sat Chit Ananda. So uh, what is Sat Chit Ananda? It essentially means existence, knowledge and bliss. Sat is existence, Chit is knowledge and Ananda is bliss. So let's take each of these parts individually and try to understand what each of this means. So Sat means it is that which remains unchanged in all the three periods of time. It could be past, present and the future. So basically something which doesn't change at any time is what Sat is. And to explain that Swamiji gives an analogy Suppose we think of a jug made from clay. The sat aspect of the jug is clay from the standpoint of that example. So the clay was there before the jug was made. And when the jug was made, the clay is still there in the form of that jug. And if the jug or when the jug is destroyed, the clay will still be there. So like the jug which is made out of clay, everything which is perishable is made of a substance that is fundamental and which is permanent. That fundamental substance from which this perishable world is made is the supreme reality, Brahman. It was, it is and it will remain whether or not the world exists. So from this standpoint, Brahman is Sat, which is existence at all times, irrespective of the existence or non-existence of the world. Brahman is never non-existent. Once we understand that uh, Brahman is existence itself and it is ever existent, then we must um, understand if Brahman is sentient or non-sentient or insentient rather. The word Chit that is used to reference the nature of Brahman, reveals that Brahman is consciousness or awareness itself. This consciousness exists in all states of our experience, be it waking, dream state or deep sleep, which is enlivening everything that is experienced, right? I mean, it's making us aware of all of our experiences. Basically, it's it's giving that light to our experiences or it's making those experiences possible for us in all different states. Even in deep sleep, we might wonder like, you know, where is consciousness there when we are in deep sleep? But after we wake up in the morning, we do know that we have slept well. We say that we really had a deep sleep when we wake up if we really felt we slept undisturbed. How do we know that? That is because there was that consciousness present even in that state, right? So after concluding that Brahman is existence and consciousness, then we may wonder, is the nature of Brahman sorrow or happiness? And the term Ananda uh, speaks to the fact that the nature of Brahman is indeed bliss and joy without any conditions. So generally when we are experiencing that ananda or bliss, that is when we don't feel the need for anything else. Whenever we experience that joy, we are with ourselves basically. We don't feel like we need anything else at that moment when we are experiencing the joy, right? That is what bliss is when we are with ourselves. For example, when we want a certain object and then um, when we get that object, that happiness that we have in that moment is of just being without wanting anything else, right? That state which we experience at that time is called ananda. And that is the fundamental nature of all human beings. 
whenever we are looking out for something to give us happiness it produces happiness only for a short period of time that object that we are desiring is actually just an instrument i mean the the happiness is not coming from the object itself and we have studied this in the previous uh, sections in one of the previous talks where we realized that we don't get happiness from objects happiness is just a state of mind so we don't have to keep on searching as to which object is going to uh, give us that happiness or what is the source of happiness the source of our happiness is nothing but our own true nature which is existence consciousness and bliss we just need to realize that when we realize our true nature and when we are one with that self that supreme reality we are not tainted or we are not influenced by the different experiences that we get from the equipments of experience like you know body has these perceptions of what is heat what is cold um what smells good what doesn't smell good and um the mind has feelings such as happiness and sorrow and the intellect has uh, opinions and judgments as to what is right and what is wrong and all that when we experience that divinity within ourselves then we are not affected or tainted by these uh, experiences uh, gained by the instruments and we experience the presence of that brahman in not only us but everywhere and at all times that supreme reality that one reality without a second whenever we are experiencing the world we are always experiencing it through our mind and intellect and it's based on how the mind and intellect interprets it right because the same world is experienced in a different way by different people say for example two people are living in the same kind of homes in the same neighborhood with the same circumstances and experiences that they are going through in the outer world for sure both of them would be experiencing the world in a very different way based on how their inner nature is if one is like really uh negative minded and is looking at everything from a, a doubtful perspective or from a perspective of fear or something the way he or she experiences the world is completely different from the other person whose attitude is like a very positive one we don't have control over the objects of the outer world if we can train our mind in such a way that no matter what the objects are in front of us we still can react positively at all times once we have that kind of mental equipment in place to have that steadiness and balance in all circumstances it doesn't matter what the outer world is and w- what objects are in front of us right because we are content irrespective so basically the way we see the world depends entirely on us if you're wearing a blue tinted goggles you see the world as blue similarly we see the world based on the way our minds are the constitution of our minds so basically if we have a sad mind we see a sad world if we have a happy mind we see a happy world if we have a agitated mind we see a agitated world so just to kind of summarize in this section swami ji is telling us about the true nature of the supreme reality and he's also emphasizing that we don't need to look far away for a uh, happiness and that our true nature is also that of the supreme reality and we just need to realize it so this entire journey and learning is to realize that and experience that thank you for listening to today's reflections if you'd like to connect with me 
please visit bluesmuse.com until next time namaste